What's up? This is Michael Rappaport. You are now listening to the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. On today's podcast, we have more G Moody, Air Moody, Dunk Updates. Mm -hmm. We have a whole batch, a whole thick batch of sick fucks of the week. LeBron James came back to New York and still thinks he's the king of the five boroughs. Plus, plus, we have Portland Trailblazer. Evan Turner on the podcast talking about playing against Derrick Rose in high school and his greatness, how a tractor trailer truck fell into the backyard and right into his fucking pool in Portland, tanking, aka trusting the process while playing for the Philadelphia 76ers, playing with Dame Lillard, playing with CJ McCollum, facing the Miami Heatles, and so much more on a smash mouth, hard body karate, super sized eye. M Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Miles Jordan. It's the beginning of the show. So you know what to do. Let me get something <laughs> real funky. Let me get a smacker to start this masterpiece off. Let's go. All right. We are back. If you don't know, you better ask somebody if you don't know. Look us up. We are the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, Smash Mouth Podcast. They have no fear. Yes. The I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast is here. My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Bill Lane Beer of podcasting, a.k.a. the Jake LaMotta of podcasting, a.k.a. the Gringo Mandingo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here with G. Moody, a.k.a. Air Moody. Uh-huh. The Aaron Pryor of uh, podcast. The three-time podcast co-host of the year. Um, and uh, we're here. Have no fear. It's the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. What can I say? What can I say? It's a smash mouth episode. So it's playoff time. Yeah. The NBA playoffs start on Saturday. Okay? It's going down for real. Um, so, Yo. It's very competitive in the East and the West. Some teams, uh, they, they don't know if they're making the playoffs. Some teams don't know if they, uh, uh, what spot they're playing in. Uh, I, know. I know. Congratulations to the Utah Jazz. And uh, who, what I think should be the coach of the year, Duke Snyder. Is that his name? <laughs> Hold on. I, I like his name, sir. <laughs> no, that ain't his name. <laughs> That's, just call him that. Quinn. <laughs> Sorry, my man, Quinn Snyder. <laughs> Yo, that would be ill uh, yeah. if the coach of the Utah Jazz was named <laughs> Duke Snyder. Is, is uh, that a baseball player named Duke Snyder? <laughs> yeah, I heard it before. I don't know what the fuck. Yo, <laughs> Quinn Snyder. Well, you know what it is? Quinn Snyder used to play at Duke. That's what fucked oh. me up. Quinn <laughs> Snyder, was, remember when he played college basketball for Duke? Yeah, Duke Snyder. Sorry. Yo, wait, was there a baseball player named Duke Snyder? <laughs> I feel like there was like a, like a Brooklyn Dodger named Duke Snyder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, man. That was funny. <laughs> so, anyway, I saw the Utah Jazz uh, the other day. I was uh, with them. Uh, they played the Lakers, who I got to say look good. They, they have a lot of talent. I got to the game super early, as I do. Whenever mm -hmm. I am I'm fortunate enough to get tickets for free, to uh, an NBA game, especially when I'm sitting on that wood, that 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 real nice, that real nice good wood, uh, mm -hmm. I show up an hour early. I want to be the first person in the arena. I'm never ever taking that for granted. So I got to the game early. I got to watch your boy Lonzo Ball warm up and that disgraceful right. looking jump shot. Oh, how did it look up close? Listen, I'm gonna be totally biased. I'm off the ball, brothers. I'm off Lavar Ball. I got no problem with these guys, okay? Right. But I, I got there early. I had my feet on that wood. I actually took my shoes off and just relaxed because I was so early to the game. It looked, it looked atrocious. It <laughs> looked atrocious. And, and God is my witness. One time he, he was shooting. Uh, uh, he was shooting around. You know, that's when you're injured. You shoot around before the game with the trainers. That's customary. Do some drills. 
One time, I saw it with my own eyes. He shot a jump shot from the corner, and it hit the side of the backboard. And oh. it, God is my witness. The usher, the security guard that was right next to me, he, he said to me, he mumbled, did this motherfucker shit just hit the side of the backboard? And I go, yeah, that shit just hit the side of the backboard. But that being said, um, congratulations to all the rookies. Uh, Alonzo Ball being the, the most heralded, overhyped rookie of the 2018 NBA rookie draft class. Um, I got to see our guy, friend of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, Donovan Mitchell. And if you have never heard the Donovan Mitchell I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, it's some of our best work. Um, it's in the files. It's, uh -huh. it, it, it's in the archives. Feel free to look it up. Um, it looks that like Ben Simmons should and will win the Rookie of the Year. He's How? Been, yo. Ben He's Simmons, not a fucking rookie. I know, but listen, I don't make the rules. This is bullshit, yo. I, I, I agree. He's not a rookie, but this is his first year playing. Um, and essentially, they call him a rookie. So oh, nah. I feel like he's going to beat my man Donovan Mitchell by the nose. But it's it's been a pretty decent rookie cr uh, crop. But remember, last year around this time, we're talking about this player and that player and, and this rookie and who's getting drafted. And the majority of these dudes so far ain't shit. <laughs> the majority of these dudes, like all these guys, like, yo, he won this, and yo, he led his team, and he's 19, and he's 196 pounds. A lot of these guys come out, they come into the NBA, and they're projects, man. Literally projects. Donovan yeah. Mitchell, he ain't no project. He's averaging yes. 20 points his rookie season. Ben Simmons, call him a rookie or not, he ain't no fucking project. Yeah, they're leading their teams. These, yeah. are, these are special guys, man. That's why they're there. As of now, this recording of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, the Utah Jazz, led by Quinn Snyder, a.k.a. Duke Snyder, <laughs> quietly, <laughs> quietly are number four in the West. They could sneak up to number three. They're number four. If you're like a, a marginal basketball fan, you don't even know that the, the Utah Jazz are in the playoffs. I they're, know. They're doing their thing. And no disrespect to Dwayne Casey out in Toronto, but y'all know that you guys aren't making any fucking noise. Yeah. Okay, LeBron yeah. James, the self-anointed king, and he ain't no fucking king in New York. They're running through those guys. Um, <laughs> but I'm excited. It's it's gonna be I'm, it's gonna be fun. Uh, the playoffs. You left are, out. Well, go ahead. You left out OKC. Uh, they may not make the playoffs, and that will certainly be an indictment of David Westbrook. Berkowitz. <laughs> uh, David Russell Westbrook Berkowitz. Yeah, that will be an indictment of him because you have Carmelo and you have Paul George and you, Westbrook, and you don't make the playoffs? No, well, they actually they actually clinched it, but they made it by a fucking smidge. They made okay, it by good. like a smidge. And the reality of it is you don't want to face Oklahoma in the playoffs with Russell uh, uh, at the helm, whether right. or not he's going to involve any other players on his team or not. <laughs> uh, they they are now the eighth seed. I think, I don't listen, we don't fact check. If you've never listened to the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast, we pride ourselves on, on not fact checking anything. Mm. Not a goddamn thing. We don't fact check anything, okay? <laughs> um, no, so they so they made it to the playoffs. They made it in there by one single solitary cunt tear. Um, oh, wow. I, I want to ask you, Mr. You're from Brooklyn, right? You, you, you guys, you Brooklyn guys, you guys are real. Oh. You represent, right? All day. All day. Right? Right? Talk that Brooklyn shit. You represent. All day. All Brooklyn's, day. Uh, uh, Manhattan keeps on making it. Brooklyn keeps on taking it, right? You're born and raised in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn. You're Mr. Brooklyn, right? Absolutely. I mean... We've never officially called you Mr. Brooklyn, but you're Mr. Brooklyn. BK all day, man. <laughs> what preschool did you go to? Uh, PS 298 in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Okay, and then what, what junior high school did you go to? S seventh uh, grade? Uh, 263 in, uh, in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Born and raised in, in, in the Howard Projects in Brownsville section of Brooklyn. So you're Mr. Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, just want to clarify that. So right. what do you think about this fucking guy, LeBron James, who's never, ever, ever been anywhere in Brooklyn besides Barclays? What do you think about this fucking guy? 
What happened? Taunting the New York Knicks, taunting the fans of New York again. Just the other day, he came back into the garden. He's got his fucking sneakers on. I'm king. Because remember last time he was in there with Ennis Cantor and my man Frankie Cigarettes, Frankie Nicolina? Uh-huh. I remember they got into a little beef, little patty cake, nothing nothing significant, little patty cake. He, he could pull that shit with French Frank. Okay? Okay. He, he pull that shit with French Frank. But you can't pull that shit. Uh, uh, but with, and his canter stepped up and like, y'all, I'll you, you're not doing any of that bullshit with me. Uh, but then he comes back into the garden wearing his fucking sneakers, his custom-made sneakers. I'm king. King of what, oh, dude? Like, I, it all goes back to this. Whether you're King James, he's the greatest player of all time. To be the king of Ohio, like, no other, there was no other contestants. Like, when he was running for to be the king of Ohio, like, no one else was like, oh, I want to be the king of Ohio, and then the people didn't vote. Like, he was the king. No one else cared. Yeah. Like, I don't know why he thinks that so. Like, you're the king of Akron? Who, I, who are you running against, Duke? Like, don't come into the garden with that bullshit. But the question I have for you, since you're, you know, Mr. Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay? And you're a LeBron James fan, fine. How That's do you right. feel about him coming into your city where you were born and raised? I'm king. No, you're not fucking king. <laughs> Yo, that guy is bugging out for writing that shit on his sneakers yes. anyway. Yes. Yo, I never seen, imagine Kareem, imagine Akeem coming in and writing shit. Imagine Akeem and Ralph Sampson dancing before the fucking game, game seven. There we go. And, and, and writing shit on their sneakers. I caught you Did on he? a good day. Your mind is right. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Yo, this is the type of shit. Crazy shit. That takes away from your legacy. Yes. Doing sucker shit like that. There it is. R writing on your sneakers. Yes. Like a kid. Yes. Like I'm king. We know you nice. You exhibit that every night. Duke. I like Why you got to write at? it on your sneakers, B? I like where your head's at. That's the fucking Moody that the people want to hear. Let me tell you something, Moody. <laughs> I, 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 this is probably the fourth time I've said this. I have gotten some filthy. I mean some filthy. DMs and tweets on the low talking shit about you. But this is the way you garner back the fans' uh. respect and their beliefs. Okay, since you're Mr. Brooklyn, way to take a fucking stance and not dibble-dabble on the fence. Congratulations. Uh. <laughs> now, now, let's throw this at you. All right. We are uh, two weeks into April. You proclaimed a bunch of things. Mm-hmm. You proclaimed the Boston Celtics wouldn't make the playoffs. You, you, you've taken the blueberry pie in the face for that. They're making the playoffs. Remember you, you remember you proclaimed that? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Okay, and then you now now and you, me and you made some sort of bet. I can't even remember what the bet is. That in the first week of May, come springtime, mm -hmm. you will be dunking a basketball at how old are you, 51? <laughs> 49, brother. Okay, okay. And I just wanted to follow up with you on your training. You, you, you're in week two of your training. Yeah. Um, and you posted a video that I will be posting and I yellowing <laughs> with this I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, in just week two of your training, you pulled a hamstring, you fuck. Didn't you Twitch. pull a hamstring, you fuck you? Twitch is the word. Not what does pull, that mean? Where it's just... It's not a, 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 a pull. It's not, it didn't rupture all the way. I felt a little pain. I stopped. So it's actually healed. And I'm just letting it ride out because now I am transferring to the court. I'll be playing basketball up in Harlem and easing back into it. And before you know it, all this shit will be done. I'm aching. The training, my bones is fucked up. But that's the progress. Yeah, you that's look, how shit you, you, you look like shit. This is not the <laughs> Gerald Moody that I, I remember in the 80s and the early 90s and even into the late 90s. You look like shit. Yo. Okay, and, and I noticed I noticed you you were up in the mountains for your latest training regimen, the regimen that I am going to be ILOing when this I Am Rapport Stereo podcast drops. Correct? I'm on some, I'm on some Jerry Rice shit. I don't know. See, you walk. You you walk up the mountain. Dude. I'm running. Oh, you don't I'm remember running. the... See, I got some videos you don't remember I have 
And, from, and I'm, I'm doing shit. Oh, check it, rap. Okay. I'm doing shit for a specific athletic endeavor. Your man I'm can't not, dunk. Your trainer <laughs> ain't got no hops. Yo, you create. Yo, my man, my man Jesse could dunk. Check his shit out. Check his page out. Your man ain't banging he, on nothing, Duke. Your man yo, ain't banging. Your, your man ain't banging nails in the wall, Duke. The fuck yo, is we you got, saying? Yo, we got this, and I'm just getting started. And when I start balling, that's it. That's it, B. This is just to get loose. I I, I didn't say you can't play ball. No, I'm we saying we're not talking about playing ball, my man. We talking about dunking. I don't give a fuck. What you <laughs> you doing, you know, post moves and jump hooks nah, and drop no. steps. Nobody gives a fuck about any of that. No, We're talking about I'm one saying- <laughs> specific thing. Dunking this- a basketball on a 10-foot rim outdoors, Duke. I, you 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 determine if it's outdoors and nah. That was part of the bet. I listened to the files. Nah. That was nah. part of the bet. I listened I said to I'm the- I said I'm indoors. I said I'm 49. I'm indoors, man. Yo, I ain't doing none of that bullshit. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Part of the bet was, listen, If you, I'm just trying to keep the fans not, from, yo, from, from turning on you. I'm going to pull the foul. We're talking about a 10-foot rim outdoors in the park. No. We used to do it out in the park. Now, now you're too good to no. play outside in the park? Like you're worried about your fucking knees? You just yeah, tweaked the hammy. You tweaked the hammy 10 days into training, and you're worried about your fucking knees? Yo, wait, wait, your, knee, your knees are going to be shredded baloney when I'm fucking no, done with you. Nah, nah. That's part of the procedure. Things are going according to plan. You all can right, talk so I, all the shit you want, but when I dunk it in the gym, I'm not doing no outside shit. I can't shit. wait for this. Yo, I can't then, wait, wait. I can't fuck. And, and I, then I then even you be, say you can't dunk a fucking golf ball. Nah, when, when, nah. Yo, when you, when you submit, when you submit after five attempts of trying to dunk a basketball and like your jumps keep getting lower and lower because nah, that's what nah. happens. No. And then I'll say, I'll throw you the golf ball. I'll be like, dunk the golf ball, dude. <laughs> Fuck the basketball. We know you're not doing that. All you got to right. do to dunk a golf ball is get your two fingertips above the rim. Come on. Dunk dunk all the right. fucking golf ball. All right. All right. All right. I ain't saying shit. Mm-hmm. You'll see. Okay. Okay. Have you, you jumped know. on a basketball court since your training? Just asking for a friend. We're not. I'm not there yet. The okay. training is regimented, Okay. Pete. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold your head. I know what I'm doing. Now I'm getting basketball shape. Oh, gee, and in two weeks. Jesus oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Yo, this Thursday, uh, I'll be on Fox Sports 1. Speaking of basketball shape, uh, we're having the live draft, uh, the big three, season two. It's going to be fun. Going to be a lot, a lot of shit talking. Um, I believe it starts at 7 p.m. I don't fact check, even for my own stuff. But... All the players, uh, I mean, there's so many different players that, that are, that are uh, obviously the guys from last year, the coaches, Iverson, Doc, uh, you know, Gary Payton, greatest shit talker in NBA history, in my opinion, um, Ice Cube, Kenya Moore, and Steven Jackson, and, and there's like tons, 80 players are, are showing up to the Combine, which is um, on the 11th. And then the 12th, we do the live draft. It's going to be fun. It's not going to be boring. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I, I'm telling dudes, like, yo, you wasn't in shape, dude. You're not getting drafted. Go downstairs to the coffee shop. You don't embarrass yourself. I'm going to say that to former All-Stars because that's that's what I'm there to do. Um, okay. Well, how did I get on that? I, I don't know. Um, You know, I was watching the Bill Maher show the other day, Friday night, which I like his show. He annoys the shit out of me with his big claymation fucking rubber nose but, but I like him. And he had Geraldo Rivera on. And they had a good debate. You know, Geraldo Rivera, um, you know, he works for Fox News. Geraldo Rivera has been in the shit. He's covered wars in Somalia. He, you know, like he's gotten his hands dirty. Bill Maher, you know, knows politics. He's a comedian that studies politics. But he's never been that close to the shit, as they call it. Um, anyway, so Geraldo Rivera now works for Fox News. Um. They respect each other. They went back and forth. And then later on in the show, there was a conversation between, I don't know, who, who, who's my man? Um, Not my man Wiener. Who's the other New York uh, uh, um, politician? Like he, he got caught up in the, with, with the hookers down there, down south. Uh, we got the big jaw and the comb over hair. Oh, Spitz? No, my not man Spitzer. Spitzer. My man Spitzer. Oh. Oh. He was there and they were having a whole conversation about whether or not that other Fox News chick, Laura Ingram... Whether people have a right, people have a right 
to try to uh, uh, get sponsors to not uh, uh, support her shows. And they had a whole back and forth, and they were making their points. But then the next day, I'm looking at the news, because this, this is that fake news bullshit. The next day, I'm looking at the news, and it says, uh, Bill Moore supported Laura Ingram. And, you know, they're trying to skew this shit. And, yeah. you know, after some of the shit that I've been through uh, with these bloggers and the way they try <laughs> to take things out of context to try to get clicks and headlines, I, I was really... Uh, did you see this? Did you see the Bill Moore show? No, I didn't see it, but I saw... Uh a newspaper article about what you're talking about. It's totally not true. He didn't right. support Laura Ingram. He just was saying that, you know, she has a right. Like, and he said, I can't stand her. But she has a right to talk her shit the way she wants to talk it. There's like a fucking protest every day. Like, I want to protest protesting. You know, like every day there's like some new protests and who we're going to ban and all. It's all, it's all fake news. It's smoke and mirrors. Like every uh -huh. day on Twitter, like, oh, we're gonna ban this person. Oh, hashtag this person or no more. It's a fucking joke, man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's about, but I think Donald Trump said fake news first and there, and nobody said people said, Oh, he was bullshitting. Shit is fake, man. A lot of this shit is fake. A lot of this shit is fake, but a lot of the shit he talks is fake too. Your man. <laughs> so so he's the fakest of all the fake. Uh, news outlets because he 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 talking sideways man uh, and uh, even Geraldo who who wouldn't talk out of pocket about uh Donald Trump because he's been friends with him for 40 years which was ridiculous because like he just won't talk out of pocket but he validated like yo he talk he making up shit like he just makes up shit out of nowhere anyway uh, Laura Ingram is back okay she's back after she took her little vacation you know I talked my shit everybody talked to shit she's back on the air um, and I have no problem with her being on the air. But if you're going to try to bully people and talk shit to people, uh, don't get upset when you get it back. And here's something that I, that I found out that I didn't know about this animal, Laura Ingram. And she's a true animal. <laughs> I heard this on the Howard Stern Show. And they fact check. When this pig was at Dartmouth College, there was a, a I'm taking this out of context, but there was a gay student union meeting this animal for gay uh, males, gay men, mm -hmm. they were having a student union meeting. And this is probably 15, 16, 17 years ago. It doesn't even matter if it's now or whatever. This is a private meeting. This pig sent in a private eye. She hired somebody to go into the meeting to pretend that they were gay, to take record of who was in the meeting, and then wrote an article about who was in the meeting, what was said at the meeting, and then sent it to, these are all college students, sent it to their parents. Oh, shit. So, oh. so this Laura Ingram, she gets everything she deserves. Oh. She gets, I mean, think about the, the evil within her to do that, to try to basically out teenagers yeah. that she goes to college with by any means. Like, yo, you, why you have a problem with yeah, these people? Yeah, why does she care so much about, yeah, I got I to gotta tell your moms you over here bugging out. <laughs> why? Why you care so much about what the next man is doing? Insane, right? I, I don't understand that. Like, people going to be with whoever they want to be with. Who why cares? do you fucking care where you got to intervene and and tell their moms and what why don't you focus on your own life? I don't I don't get that, yo. Yeah, it's insane, man. It, it it's really really uh it's really insane to be fixated on someone else's sexual their their lifestyle, their sexuality, to be so fixated on somebody else's shit. Um what else is going on? You see uh Cynthia Nixon is already uh, campaigning up here with uh, she says uh, she wants to make New York, New York City, New York State, uh, a sanctuary city. Sanctuary for what? For undocumented illegal aliens. That's that's what she's campaigning. She's not going to win. She's not going to win. You know, uh, although Cynthia Nixon sounds, seems like a, you know, like she's a decent person and yeah. she's a thoughtful person. Like, I, it's just like, yo, 
if somebody was taking over ownership of a building and they don't know nothing about running a building and being a landlord and, you know, you know who to call when the plumbing goes down and who to call when the heat gets fucked up. I want somebody with a little bit of experience and a decent person. Yeah. And, you know, like, I don't want just, like, Joe Schmo person, like, yo, I'm going to do this because Do Donald Trump got th everybody thinking yeah. that they can do this shit. Yeah. You, yo, <laughs> and, and unless you're Donald Trump and you're ready to talk that real wild extra shit, not everybody could do this. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Don Donald Tr Trump has a talent for talking that real wild extra shit. Yo, Donald Trump is a shit talker extraordinaire. One of the best ever. You right. know what I mean? One of the best ever. Yo, and, period. And he's like the Steph Curry of politics. He revolutionized the way politics moving forward. I can't argue with that. <laughs> I can't argue with that, Mr. Moody. Um, all right, Miles, Jordan, it's about that time. <laughs> And I want to give a shout out to a guy I am calling, officially calling, the sick fuck of the week whisperer. My guy, Mike Schaefer, on Instagram. I don't know where this guy gets his information. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he sniffs him out from. But he is the official sick fuck whisperer of the I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast. He sends me so many sick fucks i mean one after another after another after another and i have to i have to give him his love i have to give him his just due he's truly the sick fuck of the week whisperer that being said miles jordan let me get that music this award is earned not given it's called the sick fuck of the week this guy's really sick lock him up how could you do it don't let him out Damn, you fucked the dog? You what? You fucked the dog? Why would you fuck the dog? Why would you fuck your girlfriend's dog? What? Sick fuck. The sick fuck of the week. It's earned. Earned. Not given. You did. What? No. 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 no! This is the sick fuck of the week. It's an award that is earned. Not given. This is an award that is earned. But not given. First, in Germany, a dog, a Staffordshire Terrier, that killed his owners, not one of his owners, two of his owners, killed a 52-year-old woman and her 27-year-old son. One dog killed two people. Mm. Okay, they were mauled to death by one dog, and I believe it happened, uh, I, they don't know. There's been an autopsy. But, but, Damn. dog lovers, dog enthusiasts in Germany are trying to keep this sick fucking dog alive after it killed two people. Why would you want this dog? Who, what is this going to be, a pet? You put him in a fucking zoo? Where would you want this dog to be? Hey, hey, animal rights. Nah. Nah, that ain't no animal right. <laughs> Shoot that fucking dog. And I'm a dog person. I'm looking at Wheezy, the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, news dog right now. They need to shoot this fucking dog with a gun or a bow and arrow. No. Take him out of his misery. misery. He killed two people. Hey, we don't know what the fuck they was doing. Why would he do that? <laughs> Next sick fuck. This comes from our sick fuck whisperer. Um, a 46-year-old man in India... I can't pronounce the town. I'm not even going to try to do it. Chopped up his mother, separated the body parts, and hid them in a giant refrigerator for three years. They were finally found. His mother's remains were finally found, spread all over a building in, I can't even pronounce the name of the, the city in, in India. But, but, I mean, this is the definition of all things sick fuck Damn. on the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Can you imagine? What, 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 what are you doing with the parts? <laughs> like you saving them shits like a, a steak, a turkey? <laughs> yeah, vacuum packing a fucking thigh. That's what he did. That's Yo, what he did. It, well, what's the excuse? What, 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 what? Well, you, you know what? If somebody does that, they don't, they don't get the opportunity to give an excuse. I don't care. You're a sick fuck. Congratulations. You just made it to the I Am Rappaport Sick Fuck of the Week. Um, in Phoenix, Arizona, a mother, this is insane, a 40-year-old mother tasered her 17-year-old son 
because he was late. Because he was late going to church. <laughs> she, she, she couldn't get her son up. He was tired. She, she got out that taser, that zap, mm. zap, and hit him with the... She, of course, she got arrested. This is supposed to be a God-fearing woman. And this was on Easter Sunday. Damn. The day that, isn't that the day that Jesus rose? Yeah, so get up, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> in New York City, officials in the entire state of New York... There is a red alert. You know that synthetic, uh, that ooey, mm -hmm. that like synthetic weed? Instead of buying real weed, people want to buy the cheap version, that synthetic weed that we don't even know what's in there. Yeah. We don't even know what's in there. But in New York City right now, listen, if, you, if you're into that synthetic, okay, and you're into that ooey, I would take heed, okay, because some sick fuck in New York City laced a huge big batch of New York City synthetic weed with rat poison. Oh. It causes uncontrolled bleeding and will kill your ass. It's, all, it's also in Illinois, Maryland, Wisconsin, Indiana, and Missouri. Yo, Damn. if these dudes want to do that synthetic, let them rock, man. You lacing a whole batch with that rat poison? Yeah. Yeah. Man, that, that K2, man, that's the risk they want, though. When they hear shit like that, they go fuck it. I'll do it anyway. It'll be it'll be a, a trip. So, God forbid. I hope that you know cats take heed and be you know not mess with it. But you never know, man. This was another uh, uh, thing that happened a couple of weeks ago on Easter Sunday. Okay, in Florida, a 38 year old woman set her ex boyfriend on fire Damn. and locked him in the apartment. On Easter Sunday, she invited him over for dinner and then set his ass on fire. Siobhan Perez is accused of setting her boyfriend on fire. Duke, why are you hanging out with your ex on Easter Sunday, man? You couldn't tell she was nuts? Listen, if anybody makes any kind of threats to me, like they're going to do this to me or they're going to do that to me, I don't care if we've had sex. I don't care what we were. Really. Yo, when you tell me, yo, you're going to, you know she probably said, I'm going to kill your ass or something mm -hmm. like that. And, and you want to keep going back. <laughs> yeah. She told him that there was a link under the bathroom sink, locked him in the bathroom. Oh. Set the shit on fire. Tried to kill money. Oh. Um, all right, finally, this is a self-induced sick fuck. This is a guy who has nobody to blame but himself. In China, okay, I guarantee you when they fact-check this, the guy was on that ooey. <laughs> in China, doctors were called in. A man stuck three feet of phone cable down his own penis into his urethra, all up into his his bowels and all that Whoa. shit to stop what he was claiming was an itch. What do you have to be on to stick anything? Yeah. Let alone three feet of cable into your body to stop an itch. What do you think he was on that 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 rat poison? Yeah. That K two. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine the pain that that must be? Uh, yeah. It's more pain than the actual discomfort than the you actual. You got a little itch. itch? What a dumb guy. They should just cut his whole fucking loaf off. Cut that shit off too. Yeah, you don't, you don't deserve it. Yeah. You don't deserve your pipe. Damn, trying to, yo. <laughs> An itch. Why don't you just go to the doctor, money? Fix it, yeah. What are you doing? Man? Get yourself some, some talcum powder or some shit like that. Fucking putting chains in his shit. All right, one more bonus, sick fuck. In Pennsylvania... Authorities arrested a couple, a couple mm -hmm. that ran a brothel, 26-year-old Brittany Patrick and her 27-year-old boyfriend, Lucas Trout. And if you look up Brittany Patrick and Lucas Trout, take a guess what they look like, Mr. Moody. <laughs> what do they look like? <laughs> Sick fucks. Right. <laughs> they were running a brothel out of their home while their kids were present. You sick animals. No. Oh. They had an 18-month-old child in the home, and they're running a jump-off, a house of ill repute, a brothel in Pennsylvania. Man. Like fucking uh, JoJo Dancer, like, like Richard Pryor shit. Yeah, he grew up around that stuff. <laughs> so congratulations to all the sick fucks of the week. 
Uh, uh, it's an award that is earned, not given, and you people truly did it. Listen, we're going to get to it now, okay? It's playoff time. The Portland Trailblazers are in the playoffs. Evan Turner, formerly of the Philadelphia 76ers, played a little stint in Boston, found a home with the Portland Trailblazers, plays side-by-side with C.J. McCollum, Dame Dollar, also a friend of the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast, all kinds of stories. Grew up in Chicago, playing against, playing with D. Rose. What it was like growing up in Chicago, the gun violence in Chicago, playing against LeBron, some of the greatest shit talkers in the NBA that he's played against, facing the Miami Heat, and so much more with Evan Turner of the Portland Trailblazers coming up next on the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Evan Turner. I appreciate you coming through, man. Well, thank you for having me, man. I'm a fan, and I, I get the feeling just from like the little bit that I know about you. Like the reason why I was excited to talk to you because you're not just basketball dude. Oh uh, no, nah. <laughs> way more, I guess. Just different. Uh, I, I like different things for sure. That's, you you grew up in Chicago? Yeah, I grew up on the west side of Chicago, Sir Mac and Pulaski. Um, I went to St. Joe's High School, uh, where Isaiah Thomas went, the Hoot Dreams movie, and uh. People don't know I went to middle school with Iman Shumpert. We were the starting backcourt back in the day. So I, used to, I grew up around there during the Jordan era, you know, fell in love with the game and, you know what I'm saying, like music and all the other stuff, all the other fun stuff. So you're a Jordan guy? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It's all I ever knew, MJ. Could, yeah, and I get it. I understand yeah. it. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's the easy choice because I'm yeah. a New York guy. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, like Jordan, I wasn't fucking with Jordan. Like no, I knew he was I, I the best. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Basketball, you grew up with Iman Shumpert. So in that, time west side of chicago i mean chicago's notoriously year after year going back to the mark aguire terry cummings doc rivers yeah. isaiah thomas yeah, yeah, yeah. um i'm tim hardaway yeah all those dudes. late great ben wilson Simeon. i mean and, and i'm sure dudes. a bunch of dudes Marcus that were liberty yeah, all those dudes. dudes that didn't make it yeah of course yeah. um that were nice why is there so many ball players coming out of Chicago because you guys are continuing my New York basketball like we're having a re research yeah, Donovan yeah. Mitchell but he's a little bit outskirts of New York but he represents New York yeah, yeah. I, I think um just me personally since I was a kid like all I knew was just basketball you know what I'm saying like I grew up during the Jordan era and that was just like just what we did like I was like three or four and I just knew I was supposed to hoop like my pops told me I was gonna be a basketball star so it's so funny like when I left like when I left Chicago and went to like the Ohio State and everybody's going crazy for football, I was like, I don't, I don't watch football. We play basketball. Who, who else plays anything like besides basketball? It's just what you did, just in the alley. That's that's, that's the only thing I knew. I never thought about baseball. I never thought about football. Like, like I could be at the barber shop and people are talking about a high school game that's going to happen on a Friday. A high school, a ba- basketball. high school basketball game. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just what people like. It's what people love. Just I don't know why. It's just what we did. Are you guys in gyms or in parks or does it evolve as you get a little older? Then you, if you're good, you could play in gyms. Because in New York, I mean, I'm older than you. And I don't look older. Than you. I look yeah. fucking fantastic. Yeah, of course you do. I appreciate you mentioning that. Um, <laughs> you know, we're we're in the parks, yeah. and you know, like even like you know, there was leagues in the parks and all that yeah. stuff. Like, so is Chicago basketball culture? In the gym or is it in the parks? I mean, only like obviously like the league games were in the gyms, but I grew up playing in the park. So I played at Franklin Park on the west side uh, a bit when I grew up. I mostly played in alleys and outside. It wasn't really too many places besides like going to school for practice. Right. Other than that, it was just like you go hoop outside and every now and then if you found a gym that they let you in. You went to go hoop, you know. We would break. Me and my friends would break in, actually, not break in, but we would sneak into the UIC gym downtown. Okay. Up until a lady would tell us, like, somebody would come in and be like, "Yo, do y'all go here?" Or be like, "No." Do y'all know anybody here? No. Like y'all got y'all got to get the hell out. Like right. you can't be here. You know what I'm saying? But you guys balled. Yeah, of course, always balled. Twenty four seven. That was it. That's, That's good. So uh, you said Iman Shumpert was Derek Rose. Like, who were the other Chicago like right. dudes? So, it's you, Iman. Yeah, myself, Iman Shumper, uh, Derek Rose. Sharon Collins was a year ahead of me. Uh, he, he did a couple years in the league. I, obviously, John Shire was a year ahead of me. But my senior year of high school is myself and uh, Derek Rose, like, I guess, like, top two in the state or whatever. And then uh, Iman was a year younger than us. So How good was – I mean, obviously, we saw how good he was in college. And then, you know, I mean, he's had such – talk about a career that, like, you never would have predicted the left's right turns in these, these AM injuries. But when he was in high school, you're – all-American, you're one of the best. 
What what do you remember about Derrick Rose 1718? <laughs> Man, he was just how natural, like just talented he was. He was so athletic. You know what I'm saying? He was so he was so skilled. But the most important thing, like every big moment, every big like stage, he always rose up to it. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. He's like a superhero. You know, Oak Hill comes into town, number one in the country. He beats Oak Hill in front of everybody in Chicago. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, he, uh, what was it? What, what, it's during the year he did those crazy windmill dunks at the United Center. He, he probably only missed one shot. He's like, had like 30 points and stuff. But he, he just always put on, on like the big stage. You know right. what I'm saying? And then, you know, he's just, he's just the dude is just talented. There's, there's nothing like him around. At least I didn't think so. And the career he had, that he was going into, didn't shock me. He, I thought he was just, I just couldn't wait for the world to see what we were seeing in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time, he's so humble and so, so like below key. You know, like on, so under, low key. Yeah, so low key. Like he wouldn't. Like he could have won a dunk contest at McDonald's, but he didn't enter it. Like you know what I'm saying? I was waiting. He would have won. Yeah, for sure. He's, he's just a freak athlete. I, I was just. Waiting. And he, he, when I first met him, I was bugging out because I was like, "Yo, you're he's six three. Yeah, Derrick Rose is six three. I don't think he's six four. No, nah, no, nah, he's probably like what? He's probably like six two. But he's just filled. He's bigger than what you think, but not as tall as what people give him credit for. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's just no size individual just going ham. You know what I'm saying? Where do you see, like I said, I mean, everybody loves Derrick Rose and the injuries like just decimated him. Where do you see things ending for him? Like, are you still cool with him? I mean, I never really knew Derrick Rose, to tell you the truth. He grew up on the South Side, so we played versus each other like three or four times. So throughout, you know, throughout the career and throughout our careers, it's just, you know, he was, I mean, he's not, I, I never, got you. Yeah, I never got to the point where, he was talking with me, but I got you. It's always just you know, just from Chicago. I, I like what he did for the city. I like uh, you know, he, with the youth, he inspired a lot of people. I thought that was a big deal to have a name, you know, a big name like that representing the city and giving kids hope. But I hope he gets another chance, man. I think he deserves better than how the story ends. I, know, I agree. You know what I'm saying I agree. Um, a shot in the dark. Directors here, people well, can't the, see that. Yeah, Daniel um, Pine, man, the man. Do- documentary that I saw that's coming out. FX and I'm sure it'll make its way to Netflix and all this stuff. Like I've only spent brief amount of times in Chicago. Um, and this film, a shot in the dark, like I, it just was like, I can't fucking like, I grew up in New York city, yeah. you know, and, and I spent a lot of time in a lot of fucked up places and, you know, with people that had f- way more fucked up situations that I had. What is it about Chicago and the West side of Chicago and, and the city of Chicago I mean, the violence and what's going on out there, especially to someone who is not from it, it's mind fucking blowing. And mm-hmm. and the documentary, I was like, this is like if this was on a TV show, if this wasn't a documentary, be like, this, this, this there's no place yeah, like this. Yeah. This can't be going on in 2018. Yeah, like this no. can't be, this can't be life. This can't be fucking right. You know, what what is West Side of Chicago, South Side of Chicago, like the hood of Chicago? What is your insight on it? Man, it's it's hard to even explain it. Honestly, I I just try to equate it back to you know what you can control. I, I think like when I grew up, it was like it took a village in a sense. You know, I think a lot of people. Uh, I, I knew for sure like if I walked outside or I did something, if my mom wasn't there to correct me, another adult would. You know what I'm saying? And I think in a sense, you know, when when you breathe certain type of energy, eventually it starts becoming a. Uh, a part of where you live. So sometimes I think people are almost like, you know, kill or be killed in that sense. And it's kind of like a savage, a savage situation, unfortunately, where, you know, it, it definitely has to stop because a lot of talented lives, a lot of, a lot of youth are being affected by it, whether, you know, something bad happens to them or not. They're, they're seeing a lot of negativity and it's almost like a crab in a crab in a barrel situation. And it's definitely sad, man, because I was fortunate enough to have the right, the right people around me to get me out of there and, and, and the, try to reach my potential and I think there's a lot of a lot of youth in Chicago that sometimes get pulled back from all the negativity and unfortunately are never never able to reach their potential. Is there any any like Iota, I know you're you're a ball player, you're a thinker, but you're from there. And like I said, when when I saw that that film, I was like, this is crazy. Like is there any even inclination of what you think can help stop like just the fucking gun violence like the gun violence and the desensitization that it must have on kids it's it's like living in a war state it's like living in a war country that kind of violence is 
It's so far out there. Yeah. Even if you're from other places, like like New York City, like, yo, we're not thinking like, yeah, it, yeah, nothing like that in New York. Yeah, no, I, I think, um, and it's tough. I think the simple thing is trying to, you know, reiterate the value of love, honestly. Like, appreciate one another. And, and one thing is like getting, I think getting the, the officers and everybody else back in the community, I think we're also wary of, of the opposition where, you, That's very apparent out there. I, I mean, I think so. I, I mean, clearly in certain neighborhoods and certain avenue, you know, the youth sometimes is wary of each other because of how big the gangs are in Chicago and, you know, fighting for territory and turf and what they see happen before them and it's a protective thing. But then I also think, you know, we have to do, a, uh, you know, a better job in a sense of once again, be, getting back in, into the communities and, you know, trying to figure out, open it up and, and, and and figure out a way and draw lines of where we can stop what's going on. You know right. what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's tough, man. I, I just think we have to really just tap into the school system, give kids an opportunity to use their energy and use and all that uh, attention in different different avenues. I think anytime you're outside just hanging out and about, it's a lack of resources and sense to take your attention away. I hear you. Um there's a rumor going around that there's some sort of private secret a uh, subsection book club in the NBA, and you have something to do with it. I've heard uh, Traymond Green's name in this. I've heard Igudalo's name in this. Uh, the fact that there's a book club I, in the NBA, I don't think this should be a secret like underground book oh, club. Yeah. Is there a book club? What books are you reading? Who's the Who's the head of the book club? Like, do you ever do book readings? Oh, no. Who's up to speed? Who's not? Who's fucking around? Like, who Who should be kicked out of the book club first <laughs> no, of all? So like, I, who's not holding their weight in uh, this book club? All right, so I don't know about anybody else, but you know, when Iguodala and myself, you know, we're pretty tight. We play with uh, with each other in uh, Philadelphia. So. Is he from Chicago? He's from Springfield, but he spent a lot of time in Chicago. Is that like the suburbs? It's like three hours away. It's the state capital. Okay, Springfield's okay. the state capital. But, um, you know, he did his thing in Chicago, uh, you know, down in Springfield, and people love him in Chicago, of course. But, um, so, you know, uh, he and um, some of his childhood friends and people I met through him, like, uh, you know, Rudy, Rudy Thomas, and, uh, you know, actually they're on the Bloomsburg Week cover together. I think it was him. Uh, Rudy and Steph Curry. So the guy in the middle was the one that was because they're up there in, in yeah, Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah making. That's it. why David West is like, I, I'm cool. I'll I'll make one million dollars here because I'm gonna make twelve yeah, million dollars. Yeah, David West is a very smart dude as well. So you know, some of uh, obviously I don't know about Draymond Green or anything like that, but there's no secrets. Just regular friends in the group text. Okay. It's obviously, I guess the no the notable you know notable people individuals is Rudy Thomas, myself, Mustafa Shakur. Yeah, remember him and then um. Iguodala and like eight other awesome people, you know. And okay, like, but did those are the just so as far as the other dudes in the NBA, it's just it's just Iggy. It's just Iggy. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, and Shakur. Yeah, I, I got you because yeah. I had heard Andre Drummond's name. I'm hearing like yeah. like on the street. There's like this whole like really. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm no. just saying. What I'm hearing. Oh no no no. That was that was pretty much it. And you know some of the books you just off the top of my head like the Red Notice. You ever heard of yep. that by Bill yep. Browder? Yep. Um, I didn't read it. Yeah. Um. You know, put pour your heart into it. Um. The, the Howard Schultz, is it? Yep, yeah, yep. Howard Schultz book, and then uh, was it Weeded Out? The book about you know, kind of getting hip to the medical marijuana yep, and all yep. that stuff. Just, just a couple off top, and uh, no, it's dope, man. I, I pick up a lot of game from Iguodala, uh, Andre. He, uh, you know, he's definitely uh, blessed me with his mentorship, and also, most importantly, like I said, I always get lucky to meet great people, and and you know, they, he definitely, along with his friends, and my friends, keep triggering me to learn, and and you know. Helps me, uh, you know, add something to my life that's more than basketball, which kind of leads to, I guess, a culture individual. No, I, I hear you. I hear you because, uh, you know, I mean, your time, all your guys' time is, as as pro athletes is so short. Like when you're, how old are you? I'm 29. I'll be 30 in October. Yeah. I mean, so it's like at, at, at the very best, and I wish it's the very best. 10, 11 years. Yeah, if you're saying. if you're if you're at the Lucky. luckiest peak, yeah, if you're Jason Terry, your body holds up. Yeah. Your game sort of ages well. Yeah, yeah. Right, you know, right. I mean, you know the variables. Oh, no, absolutely. No, you can't fight it. You know, uh, father time is undefeated. You know undefeated. Yeah. Beat them all. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Now you said one of these books in this book club that was far less. Uh, 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 I thought I was going to get some real insight. You said something. Uh, there was a book about. Uh, medical marijuana. Yeah. Now it's a big discussion. Uh, medical marijuana in the NBA. Yeah. What is your take on this? What do you know about it? Like, do you ever think that that'll actually be legal? Um, in the NBA. 
NBA, NFL. I don't. I don't uh, fuck with I, baseball. You play baseball? <laughs> no, no. I, I like going shit. to the Cubs game. So that's you're from Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we get a free hot dog or something like that. Yeah, you, you, we chug beers every inning. Did they charge you? Yeah, they charge. <laughs> they charge you for beers? You're a homegrown fucking basketball star. Oh, man, you know it's the Cubs. They were the same people uh, raising the ticket prices when they didn't go to, to the World Series for fifteen. Disrespectful. Yeah. Nah, nah, that's dope. Those uh, Wrigley Wrigley Field's a dope spot. And yeah, it is actually, nice. let me say some. Um, my great grandma turned one on one, and I was fortunate enough to take her to a Cubs game. He put her on a big screen, brought her on the field, and uh, Anthony Rizzo got to take a picture with her and everything. So they they tra- they treat her well. I saw a pic. Your your great grandmother still alive? Yeah, she's she'll be one on four in September. You have a great grandmother that's one hundred and four years yeah, old. Yeah, she's really smart. Actually, if I brought her in here on a podcast, I think you might get like a billion views. I'm not gonna lie. No lie. No, she, she's legit, man. She's legit. She's legit. I'm not going to lie. She's, she's still thinking everything works. She's smooth. That's a blessing. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a big blessing to see her. It's, she's a beast for sure. 104 years She'll old. She'll be 104 September 29th. So you might play to your 50. That's what like I, 40s, that's like what a, I that's think. Like 40s. That's like nothing. No, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm probably like 22 at heart for real. I'm 29, you know? <laughs> All right. So you, we're not we're not weeding away from the weed oh, the, question. Yeah, the, yeah, let's get back you to tried it. to slick that by oh, no, like the grandma because no, no, I was going to ask you about your great grandmother. Yeah. It's 103, it's 104. Yeah. We're yeah. going to go back to the goddamn weed. The the legalized weed in the NBA. I want to hear your take on this. Honestly, it's, it's tough to really say because when you legalize it, you have to count on the individuals that are part of you know each uh, organization being responsible about it. Like me personally, you know, it's things that you can do during your off time or whatever. But when I'm going to a practice focus, I want to make sure everybody is all you know 13 guys in a locker room. Right. Is you know what I'm saying? My I got minute, you. Or if it's a big game, I don't want somebody showing up like. Out the, you know what I'm saying? On that Bubba Kush. Yeah, yeah, on that good stuff. Especially, yeah. you know, in Oregon, as you know, it's natural out there. So, I, you know, I wouldn't want, you know, I'm trying to throw a live or or my point guard up there dribbling slow as hell because, he's you know what I'm saying? Right. He's, he's, off, he's doing off the knee yeah, like Ray Frost his, and right. N1 mixtape He's shit. off the gelato, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> so I can't have that, you know? But at, at the I same time. Do you think, though, do you think it will ever, like in a, in a major sport, it'll ever become where... I, I just can't see that shit, man. Yeah, I, just, nah, I, I can't either because because obviously, like, the, the perception of it. Yeah, it just seems... Because, you know, NBA players, this is what I've, I've, I've gathered from mm-hmm. my time around them. And, and I have compassion for you guys because especially being 29, 30s, you know, like, you guys are almost like... And, and we were talking off mic about LeBron and I was saying how, how much I admire and respect yeah, how much he... Does, yeah. How he's outspoken. But, like, you guys are literally, especially with Instagram now, I mean, your whole entire career, like, 24-7. If you say something on the court, yeah. whether it's... If, if it wasn't picked up on the game, it's wind up on Instagram. Yeah. You know, if you... You know, say something in the locker room. What you're wearing. What I mean, the, the art of trash talking is gone in the NBA. Yeah. You guys are almost like Nickelodeon child stars. Like you, like it's the premise. <laughs> like I, Carly, can say this much, and an NBA player, NFL player, can say this much because the image is yeah. like of such like it's like a it's not even a PG thirteen movie. It's like a PG child star. Yeah, for Do you sure. know what I'm saying? You know, like I, what I, you no, could I'm get saying. away with. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I think um, you know personally, one, you know, when it comes down to it, I'm an individual where I. I I try to be accountable for everything I do. So, right. so if I feel something or I want to say something, you know, when I was younger, I somewhat was more, you know, fiery about it. But if, if it comes out of my mouth and I say it on wax or whatever it is, I don't, you know, I don't regret it. That's who I am as a person. That's who I am as an individual. And that's what I represent, you know? So have you gotten in trouble? Like, are there things that like sort of blew up in your face that you said when you were younger? <laughs> yeah, I mean, bu- I mean, actually, with the Derrick Rose thing back in high school, I got into a big. Uh, what was that? What? Don't make me fucking Google it, Evan. No, I'll just I'm fucking Google the shit right now. Then, Thanks for fucking Google it. No, 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 because I don't. Me, me personally, when people aren't here, I don't like speaking. At, like, here, let me. Like, what I, was it? What, what was it reported as? Because I'm not trying to stop. Like, yeah, I'm not no. trying to walk you into anything. I'm oh, just saying, yeah, what no, was it no, reported no, as? Oh, no, it's just we just played in a game and it just got a lot of trash talking here. Oh. Yeah, and just, just stuff like that. It wasn't anything worth it. I got you. Yeah, carrying over. But then, you know, I, I got into a trouble on media day one time when I was. What year was that? Year four? For whatever reason, the Sixers had a live media day during a tanking moment. So I don't know why it was live, because nobody would have been watching. And um, I picked up a mic, and I went, what did I say? Motherfucker! And all that. So that was kind of crazy. And then, <laughs> was it, well, What's the blowback of that? I mean, well, usually what I do is kind of funny, I guess. So I haven't really got any blowbacks. Only time I got like closer in trouble a little bit was like... I. 
I guess I criticized some refs like after a playoff right, game. Right, right. But other than that, I, it was... They don't play with that, right? No, they don't play with that, man. That's, fine? They try to fine me, but actually, um, I think they, they gave me a benefit of the doubt because I usually just keep my nose clean. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you brought up the tanking in Philadelphia. When, when, when you say like tanking and, and Philadelphia, obviously... You're the number number two pick yeah, by the 76ers. Yeah. Those motherfuckers didn't trust the process. Yeah, yeah. Now, we found our home in Portland. Obviously, everything's working out for Philadelphia. What was going on in the culture there? How frustrating was that? And is this whole tanking thing, is it actual tanking? Like, Or is yeah. it like sort of like, we're not doing every single thing we possibly could to win these inconsequential last five games? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Honestly, like me personally, just as an individual, as a competitor, I thought it was corny. Um, you know, I, because I definitely comprehend, and I'm there with some of my teammates, and I see how those individuals were showing up to work. And most importantly, like you only have so much room to, uh, you know, in this lifestyle, you know, to have a career. And I would like to think most of the people that are working are only working for, you know, monetary value. They're working for to compete they're working for everything the game was part uh, you know you've seen growing up trying mm-hmm. to make it to the playoffs trying to get a championship you know and I think in life it's too easy to give in you know what I'm saying it's too like losing is too easy of a thing to automatically be like yo I'm, I'm going to do it right away I, I didn't I didn't dig that part of it but could you feel it though oh no I, oh, I, hey, oh yeah I could it's feel a, it. like it's not like this isn't some like imaginary thing that the media made up no. like this no, absolutely. No, I, I, I'll tell a funny story. So I remember our first game. It was funny. We came out and we played the Heat. And we actually ended up being the Heat. It was like LeBron, Heat, everybody. And um, I remember waiting like for everybody to come out the locker room. So I'm looking. I see Spencer Hawes. And I see Thad Young. I see rookie Michael Carter-Williams. This is like before. It was, it was his first game. So I never really saw what he's about to go ahead and, you know, do the rookie year. Uh, Tony Roden, he was like a kid we, uh, we just got off a of trade. And then everybody else, like, you know, James Anderson was a good guy, a good scorer, you know, Arnett Moultrie. But it was like, I go back, I check the locker room, and Spencer's like, what are you looking for? I'm like, there better be one more cold dude coming out that locker room. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like some of the dudes I had met, I had to be introduced to in a sense. They turned out to have great careers and they were great dudes, but it was, it was crazy. It was, was kind of crazy to see what we were being put out, you know what I'm saying, put out there for. Well, you sense. mean like lack of talent that yeah, was being put in out a there? Sense. Yeah, because they were trying to get, right now they were trying to get everybody, anybody that would agree to a four-year non-guaranteed contract. That's what Sam Hinkie was trying to do. And what does that mean as a basketball player in terms of this tanking thing? So in tanking, basically, long story short, you, you want to lose and try to move up in a draft and basically rebuild your future. No, but this four-year non-guaranteed contract. Oh, yeah, is that non-guaranteed like, contract. Is that like a sucker contract? Oh, yeah, it's like a three, it's terrible. Like you it's a 360 deal, basically. You you might as well just stay in a hotel because you can you can get waived anytime. You know, what I got you. you. You have to wait until maybe this isn't for premier players or even oh, like no, no, of course. second tier players. Oh no, no, it's for like whoever's willing just to buy in. And then unfortunately with them, it's like they would have to wait till late February. The season starts around early October. You're probably in that city till September, and you can be in the loop for five, you know what I'm saying, six months. I got you. But at the same time, I definitely comprehend, and, and, and it's working now, I, I comprehend it as an individual and as an adult and as a businessman. Like, Sam Hegan came in and New Regime came in, and, and they have an opportunity to do what <laughs> what they wanted to do. And sometimes, you know, if, if I'm if me personally, I'm going down with the ship, I'm, I'm going to go down the way I want to do it. So I comprehended that. It seems like a real sort of basketball professional lesson to sort of wrap your head around because instinctively as a competitor, high school, college, one-on-one, three-on-three drills, you're looking to bust people's ass. Yeah, for sure, for sure. H- how hard of a pill is that to sort of swallow when it, because as a kid, when you're first there, you're yeah. not really making sense of it. Oh, yeah, how of hard course. was it to be like, oh shit, this is, um, yeah, I this me- is professional sports. Yeah, I remember it was like, uh, one of my favorite movies was Major League uh-huh. or, or Little Big League, Little Big League, okay. uh, Billy Haywood. And yeah. I remember he says, I was like, baseball's for kids. Uh, a grown ups mess it up, and that when that happened, that's why I was like, when the tanking came apart, I was like, uh, came about, I was like, wow, this is what he meant. Like, this is, it's not about the sport, man. It's a business, it's entertainment in a sense. And sometimes with the business of basketball, a lot of things that you don't like is going to occur. And uh, that's for sure when I started comprehending what that meant. I got you. You, you dig what I'm saying? Like that's when I started becoming, you know, Iggy had left in a sense. They traded Iguodala away. They traded Lou Williams away. You know what I'm saying? They let Elden Brand walk. They got rid of, you know what I'm saying? A whole yeah. team. So eventually I was starting to become, like, come into an own where I didn't have, like, a safety net. And it was like, yo, this is 
full fire, you know what I'm saying? I got Throw you. Throw you out the window type of thing in a sense of like, hey, you, you got to sink or swim in a sense and, you know, figure out your own knack, you know what I'm saying? Figure out what you can do to stay in this league and, and, and stay valuable. You you said uh, the Miami Heat, uh, LeBron Miami Heat, one of my least favorite teams <laughs> in all of basketball, all of sports, uh, yeah. boxers I've hated, uh, UFC fighters. I couldn't fucking stand that team. To me, like, you know, there's a lot of, everybody's on Kevin Durant's ass. He left, he left. Yeah. He followed the Kevin Durant playbook. LeBron James, in my opinion, that move, that big three move, altered the NBA forever until a rule gets into place. Because yeah. now every fucking team's got a big three. We got Houston, we got OKC. Yeah. You know, everybody's like, you know, I want to play with you, banana boat this and all that shit. First of all, what is your take on that? And then I want to just talk about like when when you're 104 and your great grandkid yeah. said, "Yo, I mean, this is one of the most iconic teams and a great team." I want to hear about like what it was like playing against that team. But what is your take on what I just said about this big three, LeBron? Am I wrong? Am I right? Uh, what is your what is your yeah. feelings on it? Um, I think in a sense because naturally, I guess back in the day, you know. By the way, I say I'm going to stop because all my guests and I'm on a real campaign. It's back in the days. No, you might say a lot. I'm in the minority. Everybody says back in the day. It wasn't just one fucking day, Evan. It's back in the days. It's a <laughs> it's a bunch of days, weeks, months, years. So I always I'm always like stopping like so back in the days. You could say back in the day. I say back in the days. Okay. Please continue. Sorry. So back in the days, I guess typically <laughs> you had like the the great teams that were drafted. They drafted. You know what I'm saying? Like I guess. If, if you want to say, for instance, like the Celtics, I'm, I'm pretty sure all those guys are naturally, you know, drafted to the Celtics. You know what I'm saying? The legends like that. They even go to the Bulls where I grew up at. There were very few trades. Like everybody. Scotty Pippen wasn't big deal. He was yeah, nothing. I'm saying. Yeah. Everybody drafted and developed. And now, you know, the new thing now, you know, it, it kind of shocked me when Brian did it. Obviously, I, like everybody else, I was like, wow, that's supposed to be the greatest thing, you know, greatest player of all time. So when you, when you think about it, you, you compare him to what MJ would have done. You know what I'm saying? And it just shot me because D-Wade was still so good and LeBron was still so good. And I'm like... And see Bosh, we forget. Yeah, and Bosh was unbelievable. So at one point, he was, you know, MVP candidate in Toronto. He was doing this thing too. He was like a 25 and yeah, 12. Yeah, yeah, he was a problem. So then when you break it down, it's like, wait, what? Like, is this really... You know what I'm saying? Is this really happening? Like, why wouldn't they want to go up against each other? You know what I'm saying? And it was just, it was a crazy, shocking thing. Me personally, I, I didn't... I, I thought like I would have loved to see them go in more battles. I, I didn't want to see, uh, you know, it was a little different seeing like the weight shift as opposed to being like gradually spread it out on a boat. Now it's shifted to one side. You dig what I'm saying? That was crazy. And it set, it set a trend and, you know, eventually it's for every action is a reaction and it becomes a gun, you know what I'm saying? A guns race, you know what I'm saying? A, a weapons race. Yeah. But the KD thing, it was shocking to me because I thought, KD, you know, they were up 3-1. I thought KD was, you know, with KD and a Russ combination. And they were they were a problem. Yeah, and they were a problem from when they were younger up until, you know what I'm saying? I thought, yeah. I thought it was only a matter of time before, you know, if they were to get over the hump. I didn't think there was a – I need to do it. You know what I'm saying? I don't – I never talked to Kevin about why he did it. But at the same time, man, you're going against – you got to think, man. I don't think, like we said, Brown doesn't get, get enough respect. For who he is, but I think that's an understatement because, I mean, what what Brian's doing eight or nine years straight, it's like, like, do you know what you need to beat him? If you're gonna see him for seven straight games, do you, like, do you know what you need? You know what I'm saying? Like, he's ridiculous, yeah, right? That's what I'm saying. So when it is he, he's he's the best, right? He's the best out in the league, yeah, for sure. I, in my opinion, straight up, right now, if they put James him, James Harden is good. To, is having a great year too, though. He's sick. Yeah. Okay, but. We can't even compare the two because I literally <laughs> think that if you put LeBron James right now on the Knicks, right now, yeah. they would find a way to get in the playoffs and then wind up being a problem in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the 07 Cavs, Brian taking them to, you know, what what they win. But that was when he was 22. The fact that the sickest thing about him is that he's, what, 50 now? Yeah. <laughs> and he's still doing the yeah, shit. Yeah, no, like, there's no let up. You no, know, absolutely. I, I believe for sure they would make the playoffs. And I, I think, or to do like LeBron, you have to give him this respect that he's always going to have a fighting chance to. To go down to the last second. You know what I'm saying? So going back to when you're 104. Yeah. Those Miami Heat teams, what is your your memory? What is your takeaway of that juggernaut and just that hysteria? They were literally like rock stars. What is your sort of memory of that, of that playing against that team and just the whole being on the court battling with those guys? I, I'm going to say this because, you know, obviously it's like the Heatles and sometimes, you know, you get caught up in it. 
I walked away and was like, yo, those dudes are really good, but those dudes play really hard. Like, they actually did. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Little things like chase down blocks. So you, you can comprehend their, how they would carry out game plans. Or even when you, you play the communication. You dig what I'm saying? Like, besides the talent, I would like that. Like, and the effort, they, they I think, I, I was never a champ, I think, when it came down to it. It was like, yo, those dudes, it made sense why they're at that level. Or the mental capacity of it. A lot of people can't handle that type of pressure. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Those dudes stepped up and the whole world watched. I mean, I think, I think, you know, even though even though it's a tad bit, you know, some people might say Hollywood or whatever else it was, those dudes played hard. Those dudes, those dudes got got after it. And their championship years, I mean, defensively, yeah, defensively they were unreal. just locked down. I don't think people give enough credit. Like the Warriors, like what they do and like their following is crazy. But like when we play the Heat, it looked like there's people hanging all over like the arena to try to see these games. Like they were everybody's biggest game. You you, know you would say like based on the, the the Warriors now, which you're in the you know you're in the yeah, West yeah. Portland. Dame Dollar goes hard body every time. Yeah yeah for sure. Like he's Dollar like extra goes, hype. Yeah, that, so you would say even at the the stardom of the the four guys on uh, Golden State and the Steph Curry and the KD and the Draymond and the Clay. I mean they're even the the Miami Heat was even a bigger sort of freak. Yeah. Yeah, probably for me personally because I mean Draymond on them are my age, so like so I got you. You dig what I'm saying? So to me, I'm like I'm looking at him like Draymond, a dude I've been playing ver since the Big Ten, or you know Clay Thompson. We were at you know USA together back in '09. Like you know what I'm saying? I like, got you. Like things like that. Like it, they're more your contemporaries. Yeah, yeah. So to me, like when I'm looking, it's like bro, like I just remember just how crazy. I know people went crazy for like the like the Warriors, of course, but like it looked like people were going like they went eight bat shit crazy for the heat like the the energy around it you could kind of feel it like pulling in american airlines arena it was like wow like this is crazy you the situation i saw it i think on on instagram or twitter uh you, i think you were away what the fuck happened with your house a car oh yeah oh, it was funny um it wasn't funny actually i was waking up uh it's like 8 30 a.m and um you live in Portland. I live in Portland. I live uh, in a decent area. And, yeah, uh, you, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. When you sign a contract, I read yeah, the goddamn works. numbers. Yeah, it's yeah, nice yeah. out there. It's all right. Yeah. Does it rain in the part of Portland you live in? Like even the nice areas, it rains all the yeah, time. It rains all the time, basically. Do you do you wear like a raincoat? Like, do you have one in your car? Can you leave the house without a raincoat? Oh, no, I definitely can't. I'm only outside for like ten seconds, but I I will like wear a raincoat yeah, for sure if I need to. Like galoshes or like what are we talking about? Like is it like what's the, is it just sprinkles? Is it constantly? Oh no no no! It, it gets crazy actually. It's like but it, this year hasn't been as crazy. But last year when I got there with rain nonstop, there's always a sense of drizzle in a sense for like a few months. Yeah. And are you like fuck? No. I, when you first got to Portland, when you see all that it was like that, are you like fuck? No, honestly, I was, it took me by surprise how much it rained. But I was like, yo, like I'm not about to go around fire and be shot I get burned like you know what I'm saying I, got like, you. I don't get when, like I'm not the type when people are like it rains a lot I'm like okay I dig it it rains at one point I'm like fuck it rains a lot but <laughs> then I was like I mean it's Portland it's supposed to rain whatever like you know so I, I got you respect in it you know alright so w- walk me through what happened here oh yeah so I'm waking up it's like 8.30am and um uh, you know, Chef Ken, my dude Kenny, he uh This he, is the chef? Yeah, he's cooking breakfast. Whatever. Okay, he's like actually, what do we got for breakfast here? You know, the little French toast, you okay. know, some uh paw, some sausage. Nice scrambled eggs. Okay. You know, hash brown. Okay, it's all OJ. fresh from for Chef yeah, Ken. Yeah, yeah, a little OJ. You didn't bring him. You got like seventeen people here in the gloom tomb, but Chef Ken, he you couldn't bring him over oh, to no, whip up a little something. No, he's busy. And okay, no problem. My no bad. Problem. Next time. No I'm problem. That's cool. Portland. Don't That's worry. Cool. No problem. And um so I'm waking up. I, had, I think yeah, I had a game that day actually, so you know I had to be up by eight thirty. So I just remember like sitting up a little bit and um, you know trying to just get ready to get out of bed. I just hear like boom, 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 like you know what I'm saying, like a couple of like a loud noise or whatever. I like loud noise, like someone's banging on your door, or, like car shit. Like kind of like car, you could tell something fell. Like you know what I'm saying. I didn't hear anything like er, boom, like you know what I'm saying. It's kind of like. Boom, because he ran into my bushes. So, you know what I'm saying? So, he kind of, he originally ran into the bushes, then he fell into the pool or whatever. But, you know, the day before, my Christmas tree had fell. So, I'm like, damn, Christmas tree fell. It probably hit, it probably hit like three or four things in my living room, you know? I just remember uh, Kenny being like, oh my God, Evan, a pool fell, like a semi truck fell into your pool. I'm like, a semi truck fell into my pool. Like, what the hell? And the dude was in the semi truck. Yeah, dude was in the semi truck. So when I come out there, I'm like, "Well, how, when we say fall, 
Yeah. He fell. He cra- so basically, it's an 18 ton semi truck, right? And how where I live at my house, you can go down a hill. So it's a very sharp hill, steep hill. And uh, the brakes, I guess the guy's brakes are messed up. And 18, no shit, they're yeah, messed up. Yeah, clearly 18 ton semi truck, and uh, he was carrying a bunch of dirt. So basically, I guess his brakes must have gave out. And I guess, uh, you know, my house is like going down a hill, but you kind of do a bend of a road, like turn. And he just ran into uh, the guardrail and some trees I had for privacy and dropped 18 feet into my pool. You know, so when I, I hear about a semi truck in a pool, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've never, ever even been coached on how to. That's like some lethal weapon Mel Gibson yeah, type yeah, of shit. Yeah, my buddy was like, y'all woke up to a Mel Gibson movie. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, shit, the first thing I was thinking, like, the truck's going to explode. You feel me? I don't know why, but you just never know. In my life, in the movies, know? it happens. That's what I'm saying. So I'm like, let me hurry up and get up out of here. You know, so I'm trying to hurry up and go. I'm like, let me not go through the top. I'm gonna go through the bottom. You feel me? Like, so I'm gonna go through my basement. So my boys in town, my trainer, Will Walker, or whatever, and um. So we got the chef, we got the trainer there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm looking to get in shape. None of these fucking guys no, came no, over here. No, we're going to bring you out to Portland. We're going we to get you Christ. right when the spring okay, hits. All right, okay, when okay. the spring hits, we're going to get you right. All Don't right, lie. All right. You're a little vegan. And all then, right. um, and so Are you I'm, vegan? No, I'm not. Hell no. Okay. But still, the homies is vegan. You know what I'm saying? All my friends around me just come up with this new great way to live your life type stuff. I got you. And I'm still old school. You're from you know, Chicago, yeah, man. Yeah, diabetes. Like, I'm cool with the heart attack at age 80. You know what I'm saying? Like, as long as I'm happy, you dig me? I got you. So basically, I'm about to dip. So I'm like, damn, you know, you learn 250 feet just in case something crash. You know, 250 feet, you straight from an explosion, you know? So I run by Will's room and I'm like, shit, like, Will might be asleep. I at least got to give him a fighting chance, you, you know? So I, I'm being on the door like, bruh. <laughs> Something about this floor. We got to get the hell up out of here. I'm gone. So I open up the door, my basement door, and the screen door won't open. So in my head, I'm like, my heart's beating. So I'm like, oh, shit, it's about to blow up. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm in here. So I find I break through the screen on like, on like some karate shit, like Jackie Chan, like Chris Tucker, rush hour type shit, like some real <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Threw my shoulder into that bad boy. So I go up the back staircase, like the spiral staircase. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go uphill, not downhill. I got to get 250 feet. I still, you know what I'm saying? I haven't even started the you race. You were thinking 250 I'm feet? I'm thinking 250 feet. I'm like, damn, I haven't even started the race yet. And and a freaking screen door held me up for 10 seconds. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, I, I, I got to get up in, you know what I'm saying? My Usain Bolt mode, you know? So, um, when I get up there, it's just a bunch of random people like looking down at the truck crash. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, and they're looking at me, and I'm like, yeah, y'all know this shit finna explode. <laughs> you know, so I know this shit finna explode, right? And they're looking like, is everything okay? I'm like, no, there's a truck in my pool. So then eventually, I, I calm down. Where was the guy? The guy was still in the pool. So so when I go down or whatever, I go back in my house. I'm like, damn, I'm tripping. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm tripping. So I go down. My dude, Will, is out there. But Chef Ken is out there, like, trying to save this dude. He's on some hero shit. You know, You're on some 250 feet 250 shit. 250 feet shit. Right. If if I fell into a pool in a semi-truck, please believe, last thing I'm doing, I would think it's Can you swim? Up. Yeah, like a fish. I can swim like a fish. I'm just asking because, y'all, some people can't swim. I don't know. Mom, dude, she thought, like, that was, like, the culture barrier. You know what I'm saying? Like, I black people you. know I not swim. You know what I'm saying? So, Mom, dude, always made sure I knew I would swim. Like, I got you. She thought, like, that was, like, as big as reading, you know? Like, like, that was a big deal. But Chef Ken, man, luckily the dude, the dude made out with um, three broken ribs, a hip, a broken hip, a broken leg, and a broken ankle compared to dying. Long story short, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, first response and all those people came out and helped a lot. Obviously, the crib was kind of messed up in a sense on the inside, but the pictures look way worse than the okay. damage. So, so I, was, I wasn't inconvenienced besides the outdoor, outside the house and random people showing up to the crash site for like the next two weeks. Okay. It, it was a blessing. It was right before Christmas. And, um, you know, the guy didn't die because honestly, if it wasn't for the guardrail or the trees, he could have. Flew 18, you know, feet down, passed over the pool and flew like another 20 feet down and probably ended up on somebody's somebody's house. Or if he wanted to turn the truck quick enough, seven feet to the left, he would have crashed into my kitchen where I would have been eating breakfast at. And Chef Ken was cooking that kitchen. So Chef Ken, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I got you. So it could have been it could have been tough. And then then, or he could have died and I couldn't have sold the house nowhere, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) So it was tough. But I'm glad it worked out the best it possibly could have. All right, basketball stuff before I let you go. For sure. What's your first, when you're 104 and you have your great-grandkids, 
What's your first memory of, I can't believe I'm here on the court with who? Kobe, man. It was Kobe. Um, it was my rookie year or whatever, so Iguodala was hurt. Andre Iguodala was hurt, so I had to um, guard Kobe. Or I was coming in and guard Kobe, so Co- Jody Meat started off on Kobe. And Kobe was being Kobe, you know what I'm saying? What does that mean? Like, he had, like, 20. Like, <laughs> he had, like, a lot of points. He was getting, like, everything I thought I was going to see about Kobe, you know, came to fruition, you know? And I get out there, and, and you know, I was guarding him decently well, but he he was being Kobe. And what was crazy was, like, the last two or three minutes, we're, we're in a close game, and he must have scored, like, 10 or 12 straight, you know? And I'm in his face. I'm in his grill. I'm... You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 all in him, you know, and um pause. And um he hits one shot to pretty much seal the game and he like slaps me on my butt, like nice try, Rook. Like kinda like, yo, it's tough. Like, you know, like I'm kinda like basically like I'm Kobe. And when I walk to the bench, I'm like, man, I was all in this grill, that's bullshit. And Doug Collins was like, Hey man, in the fourth quarter, that's just what he does. Like you play the best defense you could, it it didn't matter. The, the rim gets way bigger for him. And then Aaron McKee said the same thing. It's like the rim gets way bigger for him. You, you guard him the best you could, but that's that's Kobe. That's and, that, and, and that was like that was dope for me. I was like, wow, that's that was that was cool to see because I, I remember being eight years old and watching Kobe win the dunk contest. You know what I'm saying? So that was that was dope. What's another story? You know, like that you'll take. You know, cherish good, bad, or getting twenty from Kobe. Um, you know, from your early years where you were just like witnessing someone's greatness especially witnessing someone's greatness because i'm fascinated you know how you guys go from being a fan yeah. and then you're out there yeah, yeah, like yeah. that bugs me out yeah no it's, it's it's crazy um it's a blessing I, I don't take it for granted either i think um one story witnessing i always bring him up um for one iguodala everything he did because i've seen like all the you know back when he's in philly when i played with him he was like public enemy number one and i he never really got the respect I thought, you know, he deserved. And he goes to the Warriors and gets MVP, you know, the finals and everything, and, and becomes an all-star and, you know, Olympic gold medalist. That was dope. That's dope. You know, see somebody you view as a brother. Right. Had that type of success. I think at one point when Isaiah Thomas was hitting his groove, um, you know, being around him a little bit more, um, seeing how he prepared, like, there was, there was times in a game where I would see him and I would see his eyes. And I don't think people, you know, pay attention to him. I'd be like, this dude is, I remember texting him, like, yo, this is, you know, it's dope to see. Like, it's amazing to see. Like, it's real with him. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it's, it's amazing to see what you're doing. Because I see you come in early, work on your game. I see him, you know, even when we're in private, there's nobody around. Like, he's, his, his confidence there. He's tr- He truly wants to be great. You know what I'm saying? Um, Paul George, I think game five, 2014. I think uh, versus the Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals, we were facing elimination. He must have went off for 39 points. I think he had like 24 in the second half. I thought that was unreal. And then, you know, just Dame Lillard, his will is, is second to none. I think those dudes are really – I think I think if I had to tell stories about people, I think that's what, what I remember is those few interactions with those people. When Dame and CJ get going, I mean – these motherfuckers. Oh, I mean, yeah, you're like right. the you're. It's like you're, you're like the third dude. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. these motherfuckers Nerds, are yeah, they're, they're short. Both they're both ones. little. They ain't shit. They're not big. Yeah. But they get busy. Oh, they're, yeah. they're an undersized backcourt. Oh no, yeah. CJ is a problem for one. Let me let me get that out. The CJ's got a crazy offensive package that's just unreal. His handles crazy. His mid range is crazy. His threes is crazy. Those dudes are talented. Probably top ten scores in the world. Dame, he he's just tough, man. I, you know, I, one thing I have to say about him, I, I think everything why he's so successful is his will. You know, he might. What say, do you mean by that? Just his will. Like he, I don't think he. I think he truly never ever like thinks he's out. You know, in in any situation, maybe sometimes you'd be sitting here like even was 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 rap album. I'm like yo, I think I can go. I, I think I can be number one, bro. This this shit like this stuff is real. And like sometimes like you'll be like, bro, what are you talking? When you look up at him, it's like. He's being dead serious, you know what I'm saying? And or sometimes, you know, last year during the playoffs, you know, I, I broke my hand. We we made a couple of trades, or just prior to the playoffs, it's after All Star break. Uh, you know, um, we need to win. We need to damn near win like 70 percent of our games to go to make it to the playoffs. And Dame averages 35, 36. You know, on nights where we have like some heartbreaking games, and Dame would give us 35, and it's like, dang, the next night now we gotta go to Miami on a road on back to back. We just Shot our load in Atlanta and lost. 
Dame will go get 49 or something. I got you. Like his will. Like I ain't seen injuries or plays where he could think you're, he's injured and he'll just push through it. Like that type of stuff is, I got you. is, is what you, you see from, you know, the premier players. And, and at the end of the day, I think even though basketball is just a sport or whatever, I think it's something to say about the 400, 425 players are in this league. We're experts. We're some of them, like most, it's however many people, a billion people on this earth, it's only 425 of us. Professional basketball players. Yeah, professional players. basketball players in the NBA. You dig what I'm saying? And and, I don't, I, and coming up, I don't know if you know the journey from it, but it went from thousands of kids at a camp to, you know what I'm saying, eventually to top 100 to eventually going to college. You know what I'm saying? Like to, to, to survive and last that long, even making a career, it, the, the odds of it's crazy on top of just – you know, the blessing and the mental capacity of it. And I think sometimes to, to watch those dudes and how they prepare is that's something you, you don't take for granted in a sense of uh, in regards to life because it's just it's just a mindset. You you said his, his rap album. You know, we got a bunch of dudes in the NBA. My dude, Lou Williams. You got your man, my Lou. Dude, Lou Williams. You got your man, Amon Shumpert. Actually, me and Shump, this is funny. Shump. Are you spitting? Is that no, what you're oh, about no, to go no, into? No, no, no. Let, 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 me, let me not even go there. I just talk shit. I don't, I don't rap. But um, Okay. So Shump and I, we were actually, so we played middle school together. Because there's some questionable shit going on with these NBA rappers. Oh, uh, no, I'm straight. No, it ain't for me, though. It ain't for me, but. Shump can actually rap. Yeah. Dame Lillard. Dame Shump. is nice. Dame is dope. Lou Will is cold. Um, Drumming is nice. Yo, actually, I enjoyed that rap video he did last year. I was like, damn, he was straight. But, and, and he puts out, he'll just, the thing I like about Drumming is he'll just put joints out. Like, it'll be like half a song, but he'll just be yeah, spitting. Yeah, yeah, or like he'll it. spit over like an old Nas beat. Like, I like that. Yeah, no, I like it too. Because at the end of the day, it's just, it's just raw and it's him. It's not like, hey, we got to make a production or whatever. It's like, yo, this is what it is. Right. You know, That's what I'm going to. But the other day, so Iman, he just got traded to Sacramento. That must be a fucking ball up there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's got to be like suck. Yeah, like, no, no. I think he's excited for it because it's a new opportunity and stuff. I so, got you. Sacramento he's trying got to come politically up. correct. No, no, no. No, that's dead ass serious. I guess he thought like they want, if he was going to go there and ask for a bio. He's like, no, I, I want to get my my game right, my rhythm right. That's good. I, you know what I'm saying? I like Iman. Yeah, no, he's a great dude. So genuinely, that's not even a bowl of shit. He, he, I thought the same thing. I was like, damn, like Sacramento low key, like it. You know, it ain't it's the Sacramento. Best. Yeah, right now he's like, no, it's gonna be good. The coaching, he's like, there's some good young guys. We say, like, I'm ready to get, you know, get get healed up and come back and get right and, and take it from there. But we were up. He landed like 12:30 the night we were supposed to play him, and we were sitting down talking and everything like that. And then uh, he started talking about music, man. And he started just putting on some of his songs that he had out, putting on some of his music. He started freestyling stuff, just like everything. We. We were probably up to like 5 a.m. If it wasn't for me being like, yo, I have to play tomorrow. You <laughs> don't. Like, I, he's going to still be up to like 8 a.m. rapping. But he was dope. And he's definitely a talented dude. And, um, you know, I, Iman, Iman is, is a great individual. I, I love that kid to death. Um, all right. I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. I am the MVP of Talking Trash. Biggest shit talkers that you've come across in your career. Who? I mean, I know, I know Draymond. He's almost in Kevin Garnett land because he's... Talking twenty four seven. Yeah, no, for sure. I don't. I would have to go with the old school dude. Like, like I said, these like we're all the same age. So like to me personally, like when people talk trash, like we're the same age. Like you've known each other. Yeah, I'm a, and I'm a grown man too. So like when it comes down to it, I'm like I'll look and be like, yo, leave me out of that bullshit. Like you know. But I think probably Paul Pierce is a crazy trash talker. What was his style? Right, he just said whatever he possibly could. Like it, it was just it was reckless. Like I remember. Um, <laughs> They would just get the. T they would just talk. Just talk. I remember one time. Obviously, the Celtics were unreal back then. They were dope. There was, there was a night we beat them. Right, um, we were beating them. We were beating the shit out of them. I think I had like twenty eight, and I remember getting like this. You know, an and one on Paul. I bump him off. Get like a layup and one. Everything right. So, so um, when he comes down, you think he just stop talking shit or whatever. He's like, man, that still ain't shit. That still ain't shit. I'm like, bro, y'all down twenty five. I don't give a fuck. Like that ain't shit. I'll come right back. We'll come right back and, and blow you motherfuckers out. Like, he's still talking shit. I just, in my head, I'm like, this dude's an animal, bro. He's down 25. He's still, he's going down with the ship. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or a couple, and you know, Paul Pierce was actually one of my favorite players growing up. And um, it's because of his trash talk. I remember, like, ah, fuck Paul. But, like, I, I'm still a big fan of Paul Pierce in general. Like, I would, I would scream, like, yo, that dude was, was the truth. I, I can never say Paul wasn't the truth. I remember one time we were playing, and Paul's one of my favorite dudes growing up. 
I must have had like 15 in the first half, something like that. So I'm I'm towards the scorer's table, you know, but I'm kind of like a proud peacock in the sense. I'm like, damn, I just went off on a childhood idol, you know? Like, at half, I'm going to tap me on the button and be like, keep going, young fella. He's like, move, like, we're, I'm on the pad and he's like, hits me. He's like, like with his shoulder, like, bitch ass nigga. And I'm like, damn, that's, that's aggressive. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I laughed at like, what? And then we just, you know, we ended up, I ended up hitting a game winner that night and everything. But Paul, Paul was a beast, so Paul was, Paul was the best trash talker. Okay, that's good. Yeah. What, what, what was it? Like, the thing I loved about Pierce and, and his game, it aged so well because he was never above ground anyway. Yeah. Like, I mean, he was younger, he'd banging on, he's 6'9". Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, he, what, what, how was it when he was rocking and rolling and he was grooving? How hard was it to stop him? It was so tough because he he played at his own pace. He was six seven, and back then, you know, it was still more of an ISO game in a sense. It was it wasn't fully crossing over, and so to catch a dude like Paul Pierce on the island is tough. You know, he he was uh, he was so patient, man. He was so patient, and he was just the truth, man. Like I've I've seen plays where. Where you know Drew Holly will chase him off a pin down, and he, his hand is in his face like this, and he still makes the shot. Like you know what I'm saying? Or I, I played with him, I played versus him when he was in Brooklyn. He had 25 points, seven and nine shooting. You know what I'm saying? He's 30 some years old. And right. I, I remember he hit the go ahead shot. Actually, I hit a game winner that night too. But he hit the go ahead shot. I remember him being like, "I mean." I didn't even want to score tonight. Y'all made me come out and do this. I didn't even feel like scoring tonight. I'm like, bro, this dude is un. Un, excuse me, un fucking believe. I remember like that's the truth. Like, that, like even as much as I hate him for like how he talks shit, I used to be like, yo, this this dude, like his mindset, how he plays, his overall game, it's just timeless. It's just timeless. Man. I agree. Like I just sat there like, bro, this, and I like I didn't like me personally. I didn't like him at one point because how much you talk shit and everything. I'm like, but I couldn't. I was like, bro, that dude is the truth. Like the nickname fits perfectly. That dude is unreal. That dude. Hit big shots, big balls, competitive. You know what I'm saying? Didn't care who you were. You know, went at Brian the same way and everything. He that's why. I, that's why. Yeah. I, as a, and that's a, probably why you love him, right? And especially as a as a Celtic, for me to fall in love yeah, with a player, yeah. I was like, this is yeah. my dude here. Yeah, and then just go there, just go like in Boston. You always ask people, like, yo, who is your favorite? You know, Celtic. And I hear a lot of people besides Larry. I hear a lot of people say Paul. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? That's you got to respect that type of homage in a sense of what he did. Um, all right, finally, music. We talked about the rappers in the NBA. What do you like? Uh, what kind of music are you into? Uh, obviously, I'm into hip hop. Um, well, well uh, I'm going to guess the obligatory top five MC question. Alive. They have to be alive. And you could even do 6 1. It's the six. obligatory question. Me personally. And it's interchangeable because everybody yeah, interchangeable. gets interchangeable. Right now, if I had to go bump some, um, I love Big Sean. I like, okay. I for sure like. What he stands for, I think, um, spiritually, I think, like with his music, he manifests a lot of stuff. I think his vibe is a positive vibe. I agree. You can learn from it. J. Cole, I think he's one of those dudes that needs to, you know, be a politician, man. He's, he's so he's so hip to shit. Um, Chance. Chance okay. is a man. I think Chance, especially for the youth, and especially kids, like Chance is, like, it's cool to smile again. You know what I'm saying? At one point, what you know what I'm saying? I think we're getting to a point where, and me personally, it's like, I love smiling. I love having fun. Like, I can't hang out with people that are too cool. I don't want to seem like that vibe. They're like, yo, don't walk over here. You don't want to talk. Like, I love having a good time and everything. I think Chance, Chance puts, it, puts that in perspective for you. Three. That's three. Two more. I mean, Drake, of course. Oh, my God. Okay. I mean, Drake, of course. Um, He's definitely dope. Drake, I mean, it goes without saying. I mean, Drake, I, he put it on like... He's a dope song. He's dope. Yeah, Drake is I mean, dope. It's, it's, like, it's like pizza. Everybody loves pizza. Like You know what I'm saying? And it's great. And it's my favorite food ever. And then Hove. Hove, I think you go without saying. Hove, um... Hove He's the Mike Jordan of recording. Yeah, but but honestly, and then what I said my top five, if I had to say my, like, period, it doesn't matter what he does, anything like that. Eminem's my favorite rapper of all time. Okay. Period, point blank. Were Eminem. you were you disappointed with this this cause I fuck with Eminem too? I don't give a fuck what they say. Em, I, when you when you come out to that concert, when you when you bring out the concerts, I will be there. I will okay. be up there, okay? Period, point blank. I'll go see Eminem concert also. I don't care. Like it or not, Eminem helped help me a lot as a youth. I was one of those kids I identified with him. I was one of those kids that, you know, got through tough times because of him. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So you know, everything, whether it's like, you know, scene for the moment or whether it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like crazy balance like that. 
I got through it because of M. So I got yeah, you. I fuck with M. No, I, I, I hear you. Yeah, All so. Right. Evan Turner, what can I say? It was a long time coming. Yeah. I got you. I appreciate you no, coming to rock with me. Too. I appreciate it too. Hey, bro, and White Famous, you killed it. Thank you. Zebra. Do you know hit. they canceled that show, White Famous? What? Wait, what? I've been waiting the whole time. Like, bro, between that, bro, that's fucking ridiculous. That and um, the get down when I heard that was canceled, I damn near cried, bro. It's politics. You know what's funny? When I was in Golden State, Igudala said white famous to me. Bro, the white famous was a- are I know, you man. It's just like getting that traded. That storyline was good, bro. That was a good I know, story. man. I was excited, man. I was excited. I really, you know, and I'm going to be the first one to tell you if I do trash. Like, I love that show. I love doing it. And I love Jay and the cast, and I love the whole essence of it. I love the humor of it. Yeah. And it just, it's politics. It's just the same, same like your business yeah, yeah, is a yeah, business. Yeah. It's like, I could tell you things they say, and then you go, it's business. It's yeah, politics. Yeah. No, yeah. no how, how much of that was like, like for instance, like the, the scene outside the, uh, the gas station when the cops pulled up? How much was that like natural, like improv, or was that like, you the know? The majority what I'm of it was written. The okay. writer was dope, and that's why I loved, I loved doing that show specifically yeah. because the writing was so good. And like, you know, for as an actor, it's like if you're on a basketball team, I'm putting the same way as a basketball team. Like if you have a great coach that's giving you great plays, yeah. you don't have to think too much. Or Brad Stevens, for sure. It yeah. makes it easy for you, right? Like yeah. you, you don't have to like, well, what are we gonna do to 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 like the writing was so good, so like I could just learn my lines and then, you know, add a little hot sauce, but I don't have to think like, how do I make this good? So like yeah. that stuff when we were doing with the cop and all that, like, the, like I added a little, because it was so emotional, it's like Attica yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but the majority of it was written. No, that was, and, and then the story would have been, like, if that was a real movie, that would have yeah, been so nuts, lit, right? bro. That would have been so lit. I it know. was disappointing, but it was, it's, it's show business. Bro, that's, damn, that hurts. Yeah, man. it hurt me too. It hurt, it hurt us all because we all, that was one of those things where we loved going to work. And it was never like, you know, oh, we got to do another take. We were like, let's keep going. Let's keep going because we, it was fun. And Jay Farrow is a talented dude. Yeah, I believe it, man. I, I, I believe it. I, I, I truly enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the storyline and everything else. Like, that, that shit was lit. And then the heat. I loved it. And the heat. Thank you. The dog, Kevin Garnett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, that yeah, was yeah, hilarious. Yeah. And then was it, um, where did it ask you? How was the funeral? And you were like, bro, what do you mean, how was the funeral? Wait, which one? Was it Zebra Head? Zebra, oh, right, Zebra, Zebra Head. Head. I think that was one of the first ones yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, yeah. I, I was, was a little kid. I was a shorty, man. Yeah. I remember watching that yeah. all the time. That yeah. was lit, man. Yeah, that was big yeah. time. And then uh, Friday after next, or next Friday, yeah, yeah, yeah. was lit. Yeah, yeah. So was, I've been was, a big fan. I appreciate being on here. Come bro. on, man. I appreciate you rocking. Yeah, we got to get, get you out to Portland. Dead ass, man. Get you I'm out coming. No, I'm coming lie, out no, there. No, we'll set the, no, no lie. I'm, we'll set this up. I'm coming out. And then we'll bring, and then we'll just do like a day of just some crazy, just some dope, crazy. Let's just go. Whatever. The chef, the trainer. The, yeah, and then we just kick it and just do whatever, man. It's going to be a fun time. Hanging out with me and my friends is pretty fun, man. I'm, I'm coming up. To you. I'm not even going to lie. It's, it's, a, it's an experience. But it's I'm experience. just telling you right now. And I'm, I'm on record here. This is recording. <laughs> I come up to Portland. We see a game. The feet need to be on the wood. All right, all right, okay, like I'm okay, not. I'm okay. saying like I need the splinters in my shit. Like okay, I don't want like you. these are dope seats. They're in the tenth yeah. row. I can dig you, bro. Right now, we, the we, wood. We've been winning, and so I, I, I'm gonna get you taken care the, of. The no wood. Bullshit. I don't want. We're winning. Uh, oh, this no, no, one, no, no, that no. one, all, right. uh, all that playoffs. We right. hear the wood. All right, so peak game. So I, I come I, out there with no shoes on. Like, I put my feet on that wood. Okay, I dig you. I'm just saying, like, peak game. I just named, like, tons of your scenes that you probably would have never thought of, and you did them. Yes. You, you think I'm truly bringing you out there for anything less than that? It's happened before. Like, oh, 10th throw is cool. No, it's not fucking cool. <laughs> not for fucking me, it's not cool. All right, I got you, man. If not, I'll, just, I'll give you my seat on the bench, whatever. <laughs> All right, Evan Turner, I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you. It. Appreciate it. All right, I told you it was going to be a barn burner. I told you it was a supersized episode of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. I want to thank E.T., Evan Turner, for rocking on the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. G. Moody, last name rhymes with duty. Yeah, Air Monetti. We'll be back in prime time later this week. What? Air Monetti. Uh, Air Monetti. <laughs> uh, again, we'll be in prime time Wednesday. Um, and we, you know what we do. It's the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Miles, Jordan, take us out with another smacker. All right, and let it play for the people. Yeah. We're done. Peace.